CodeCamp doing the Learn Basic CSS by building a cafe menu and currently on step 21 so we're going to run through the next 10 or so um, in this video. So the div element is used mainly for design layout purposes unlike the other content elements you have used so far. Add a div element inside the body element and then move all of the other elements inside the new div. Um, so basically we actually want to um, have a div with inside the body like that and all of the other elements are going to be inside so the header and the main um, so I'm just going to put the closing div down here at the very bottom and just so it's clear I'm just going to tab um, while selecting all of these items so header and main just so that it's nicely as you can see nested um, it just makes it a bit easier to read so let's check that out and um, we've passed so let's go to the next challenge <clears throat> so step 22, the goal is to now make the div not take up the entire width of the page. So CSF CSS width property is perfect for this. Create a new type selector in the style sheet that gives your div element a width of 300 pixels. So I'm going to do that between um, these two selectors that we've got already. So we'll select the div, we'll give it a width of 300 pixels like so. Um, and as we can see here, the content has moved over to the left hand side um, and that will be because our div <clears throat> um, only has a width of 300 so it will be stopping sort of 300 pixels along maybe somewhere around there but anyway let's check the code and we've passed that challenge so step 23 comments in css look like this um, so that's a forward space a forward slash sorry and an asterisk um, so in your style sheet and you can comment out code like that. Um, you don't need the space. Um, I think it's best to do that just so it's really clear to see. And then we'll do the corresponding asterisks and oops, forward slash there. So let's check that. There we go. And as you can see, the background's white again because we've commented out background color, Burleywood. So it's not been applied. So now step 24 is to use the existing div selector to set the background color to the element um, of, or sorry, the, the div element to be Burleywood. So background dash color like so, it's Burleywood like that. And then we should get the color back on the div. And as you can see here, because we've set the width only to 300 pixels, that is the obviously the width of the, the container or this div element. Um, think of them as, as sort of containers, um, if you remember from the HTML section. So submit and go to the next challenge. So step 25, now it's easy to see that the text is centered inside the div element. Currently the width of the div element is specified in pixels, but we can actually use a number of different, um, yeah, I'm not sure, property value, um, I guess selectors. Um, so for this value, let's say we can make it 80%. And then that will take up 80% of the parent element, which is the body, which is essentially just the whole page. Um, so as you can see here now, it's 80% across the page. And then this white space here is the remaining 20%. Uh, so let's check that code. And that's all good. Oops. So let's go to the next one. So step 26. Next, you want to center the div horizontally. You could do this by setting its margin left and margin right properties to auto. And think of the margin as a space or invisible space around an element. Um, so let's do this now. So we'll do margin, oops, margin dash left will be auto. And I'm just going to replicate that down below and just set this instead of margin left to margin right like that. And as we can see here, it's now putting basically the uh, sort of the remaining space. So this 20% is the auto is basically dividing it up. Um, obviously margin left auto, margin right auto, and because both of these properties have been applied, that's essentially 10% left and 10% right, and then 80% of the this div element here. So let's check that, and that's passed. Cool. So step 27, so far we've been using type selectors to style elements. A class selector is defined by a name with a dot directly in front of it, like so. So we do dot and then class name. And then you've got your styles inside there, just like you do if that was, let's say, a div or body or, or any other actual HTML element. So let's change the existing div selector to a class um, and we can give it a class name of menu. So we'll do dot for the class and then menu. 
Um, as you can see, our styles have now gone because we don't actually have that class in our HTML, um, but we'll probably be doing that now. Yeah, exactly. So to apply the classes styling to the div element, we need to add a class attribute to the div in the opening tag and set its value to menu. So for this, you do class like so, and we let that equal, uh, we'll create a new string here. This will be menu. Um, and essentially this menu corresponds to the menu in our style sheet, um, so over here. So as you can see, the class, we're donating, essentially it's a class with the dot and the menu, and because the menu matches this menu, um, now these styles have been applied. So let's check that code, and perfect, that's all good. Uh, let me just go back to just the HTML file. Well, now we're in CSS, sorry, but yeah, since the cafe's main product for sale is coffee, you could use an image of coffee beans for the background of the page. So we want to actually delete this comment like that. And instead we want to do background dash image, and we're gonna set that to this URL. I'm just gonna copy and paste that like so and then just finish it off. And there, as you can see now, the background of the body, so the rest of the page, um, it has this background image of some coffee beans. So let's check that, and that's all passed. And then finally, step 30, it's looking good, it's time to start adding some menu items. So we just need to add an empty article element under the coffee heading, and that will contain the flavor and price of each coffee that I currently offer. Um, so if you remember, this will just be article, like so, and then we just want to close that off like that. Um, and obviously we'll be putting content um, in between there. But let's check that code. Um, perfect, that's all pass. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.